big th- oh look at that would you look at that live on youtube has finally kicked in we've like the show is like three quarters of the way done now so but but we are apparently live on youtube so just automatically i see the check mark now uh beside the uh, ice guys youtube channel so there we go uh, apparently they fixed the issues but uh we thank you for uh jo- make sure uh, everyone on twitter acts glad you were able to get there to watch the uh, show but yeah and, we and are Ian, this is this is recorded on Streamyard, right it is okay all right so we'll, i don't know so how it's going to work with the archive and getting the podcast up but i'll figure it out yeah i was, I was gonna say we'll me and you'll probably be working on that we'll, we'll try and get the whole show on youtube and everything on podcast uh, as quick as we can once we get off the air yeah, no doubt, uh, but because the, you definitely didn't want to start this show at 3.40 p.m. Eastern time and have an hour, 40-minute delay, so we had to get the show going regardless, uh, no doubt. As far as props in this game, Dora Fiev, I think there's value, uh, no doubt. Nugent Hopkins is up on the top line tonight with Dry Seidel, it looks like, and Hyman, so there is value on the Nuge tonight as far as uh, props because he's going to move up to the top line. That's another thing we talk about, Brendan, strategy with player props, that on the player moving up the lineup, third line to second line, second line to first line. It's not accounted for, and they're going to get more opportunity, more ice time. You're playing with better players, better opportunity for prop-wise. Yeah, I would say that's a safe bet. Like, Nuge Nuge is an awesome player. He's a really, really good player. And sneaky, he'll, like, come out of a game with two points or two, three points. You won't even really notice it because he's not – as flashy as a McDavid or whatever, but you know, if if you're a bet man on him to get a couple points, I I definitely you know take him for sure. No doubt. And the final game tonight, Arizona Vancouver. You know, funny thing, Brendan, is that we had Carter Hutton on the show last month, and mm-hmm. the the day we had him on, it was a Wednesday. Also, like pretty much all the teams he played for played on that night. You know, it was Arizona oh, playing St. Louis and Philly Chicago, and, and all Nashville, these teams that he suited up for, <laughs> Nashville, Buffalo. Yeah. They were all playing that that night. And here we go with you on the show. And I think we have three of the four teams you played for in the NHL in action tonight. The there only one that isn't is Detroit. <laughs> Arizona's playing, yeah. Edmonton's playing, and of course Chicago's playing uh, tonight. So it's like That's it worked the, out. It's just yeah. uh, it's the Brendan Perlini Bowl. Here on the uh, Wednesday, yeah, of the, exactly. the uh, ice guys, though, right? Uh, uh, Vancouver minus two sixty home favorite, six the total in this game. We don't have goalies confirmed. It looks like for this one as of yet. Obviously, it's a back to back for Arizona. I don't know what the fuck happened to them last night. That was a very bad game for them. Shut out by Seattle, five nothing to the Kraken. Kraken haven't been great the last month. They've fallen out of playoff contention, and uh, Seattle just puts the boots to them last night, five nothing. You would expect Arizona to show a little better effort here tonight against a Vancouver team maybe maybe they just weren't inspired you know seattle and then you got this game tonight maybe i think you'll see vancouver or arizona play a little bit better tonight uh ingram uh projected but not confirmed in net by the way they have some injuries barrett hayton's been out for a while nick bukestad now out so we've got a little shuffle on the top line for arizona tonight looks like kerfoot schmaltz and keller is going to be the uh, top line kraus cooley and gunther the second line michelli McBain and Josh Doan. I always like doing Brendan Perlini. He's got the Italian background, so I'll say Matthias Michelli. There you go for the uh, Arizona Coyotes uh, on the uh, third line. Um, Josh Josh Doan, of course, uh, third line as well. He's gotten off to a great start. Ingram projected. Casey DeSmith projected for Vancouver. And if it's him, I'm interested in an over personally in this game. Vancouver starting to score again. Uh, We saw a little bit, you know, back and forth kind of affair with Vegas the other night. Uh, with the uh, Canucks winning 4-3. Uh, Arizona just gave up a five spot to Seattle. They were involved with Vegas on Friday night, another pretty good team in a wild up-and-down affair. They played the Rangers. It was an up-and-down affair. They kind of trended over. The, the Vancouver game in Arizona last week, exactly one week ago, was 2-1, to one, but sometimes I like the reverse to happen. You know, the, 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 ne- the, the, the same two teams play each other the next week. That We saw a low-scoring game next last week with these two teams. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same here tonight. So this would probably be a look toward um, a little over six here. It looks like Seelovs might get the start again. Shelovs, actually, there's an H in there. Shelovs is apparently the way you say it. So Archer's uh, Shelovs in net here for the um, Vancouver Canucks. Again, the Latvian uh, net miner's been pretty solid, but we'll see if he can keep the uh, uh, good vibes going tonight. For me, I'll have a small look at the over. Nothing on the side, though, really, in this one. Uh, Vancouver. It probably wins, but I'm not taking them at any sort of price like this. Minus 260, not a ton of value. Uh, what do you like here, Alex? Coyotes, Canucks? Yeah, this is a good uh, live betting game. I'll be probably more than likely looking for first period and full game overs, but live, I'm going to get something closer to $1.10 or even plus money on the uh, first period over. 
five and a half laying a little bit of juice or, or plus money with uh with the full game over. So that's the thing I'm looking at here. Sea loss three and oh, uh, and it started with Vancouver. I think two of those came against uh Anaheim, which that's not really that's saying right. a whole lot. And then he takes Vancouver and they won, but you know, a little yeah. shakier, obviously. Yeah. 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 And then Connor Ingram, who you know had a, a good first half of the season, kind of regressed to form in, in the in the second uh second part. Now kind of at the end of the year, not sure what you're gonna get from him from a night night to night basis. So this could be uh you know, we could expect to see goals here, but I don't think we're going to get a, a, a lot of stuff right out of the gate early. So we should have some time to get some better adjusted numbers and prices on the first period and full game over. Yeah, Number one player prop, Allen's got it right in the chat. He's got it 100% right. Garland, Connor Garland over and over again. He's been great. Uh, he had a two-goal night against uh, Vegas the other night in the victory. He's against his old team, the Arizona Coyotes. And that's another thing we talk about, that angle, the, team, the player against his old team. It's yeah. uncanny, unfucking canny how many times he scores uh, a goal. Uh, yeah, you always situation. want to shove it down their throat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no sure. doubt. And so Connor, and plus he's in great form right now, Connor Garland, playing on that second line for Vancouver. So, yeah, there's no doubt of Vancouver. Uh, Connor Garland looked for sure tonight with Miller and Joshua, uh, Besser, Pedersen, and Hoaglander remaining on the uh, top line. For Arizona, you know, I don't think they're going to get shut out tonight. I think they'll have a better pushback tonight than they did against Seattle last night. So I would probably target Kerfoot's now on the top line center spot. Maybe he's worth a look. Cooley and Gunther and Doan. You know, basically the players I've talked about that I think are worth a look here. But yeah, Connor Garland, probably my number one player prop on the entire board between the three games tonight uh, taking place uh, in the NHL. Great stuff. Uh, Brandon, we're going to hit up the Masters now before we uh, wrap up the show. The Masters golf, we're all excited. It's the, well, some, most of us are. Alex is not a big golf guy, I will say that. Uh, but uh, He's not. But uh, uh, the Masters is coming up. I'll just throw this out um, rapid fire. I mean, we know that this course, Augusta, is legendary. We know that this course is obviously um, yeah, there's a certain group of golfers that every time they could be in the worst form possible going into the masters, but they've got a great track record at Augusta yeah. national and they are able to just all of a sudden play very well on this course. And that's what, uh, Brooks Kepka comes to mind. For instance, you know, he's going to be a popular pick. I think he's in the 20 to one range plus 2000, uh, Brooks Kepka is, has to be on the card. I'll throw out a couple others. And this is in talking with a lot of smart golf people about this tournament. I bet back in the fall, Victor Hovland to win every major because I think this kid is close. He's got that demeanor to close strong. He's been a closer in some of these tournaments that he's won. Good Sunday player. That's what you want, especially in the pressure of a major championship. So I like Victor Hovland, you know, I think maybe to finally get that first major. I like Joaquin Neiman. I, I think he not only form wise, but what he can do here at Augusta, Joaquin Neiman uh, as well in that 25 to 1 range. The Aussie, I don't know, might Cam Smith, uh, you know, might be, I think, worth a look here as well. He's had a good uh, past here at uh, Augusta. I'll throw a couple darts out there as well. Um, Sergio and Adam Scott, Sergio Garcia, Adam yeah. Scott. I'll, th I'll mention those two guys because Adam Scott has had success here in the past. Sergio Garcia, not only a former Masters champion in 2017. Sergio Garcia, check out his form on the Live Tour coming yeah. into this tournament. Yeah. He's heating up right now. And you're getting upwards of, what, 150 to 1 in some spots here for a surge uh, in this tournament. So, you know, definitely I think that's not a bad look. A lot of people like Shoffley, Xander Shoffley, and I get it, but I have not loved his finishing on a Sunday in some of these recent months from what I've seen. So that does concern me just a little bit about Shoffley. Scheffler, if you're going to – Shoffley and Scheffler – uh, Scheffler is the one I'd probably prefer. Scotty Scheffler here in this. Um, what are a couple others too? A couple of darts here, as I like to say, longer shots here. Jaeger to be Jaeger to be the debutant is a good bet, I think. You know, to be because he's I think in the Masters for the first time. His form's been very good. Fuck, he just won a couple weeks ago yeah. for me uh, at the Houston Open. I was very happy to see that. So uh, I think debutant plus fourteen hundred is a good shot there with uh, the Jaeger bomb there, Stefan. Jaeger. Um, who else there? Aberg, the Swede, uh, you know, for a little bit of a longer odds type of shot, which I'm uh, very accustomed to doing. I've taken a shot with, I don't just bet favorites. I'm not just betting your speed than your Rory McElroy. What, what would he be at, uh, that Aberg there? Uh, Aberg, let me check out the, I think he was in the 80 range the last I checked. I'll see what the updated, um, 
updated numbers yeah. are right now. Yeah, it, right. It's interesting. Guys like uh, like him, like a first a debut guy yep. is always they either do really well or they fucking hack it up. Like there's sort of no in between sometimes. So it's it's tough, but you gotta like. I mean, the guy's game is unbelievable. He's great player and i i think the one like if i had to put my money on someone right now uh i would go with that walking actually Bieber. he's 30 to 1 uh, right now there's been a huge move okay. on the 30 okay. to 1 he's up there he's yeah. up there yeah yeah i i like that neiman that you said uh yeah. he's been playing great on live like i i follow both tours uh just because i'm a big golf fan and um i think he's really a lot of those live guys are really slept on just because of you know the stupid thing with the tour and all that and, but it doesn't mean they're not good golfers right so uh like even you said garcia you know like he i think he played great last Porter week champ in blistering form right now yeah, that, he, he lost race. in the playoff last week right yeah exactly yeah. yep now i'm a i'm a golf neophyte and I, like i said and but i i knew it was a whole big story with the PGA He's 100 to 1 right now sergio with. by the way 100 to 1 yeah well, that's what, what really good. Can you guys break down to someone who knows nothing about golf? What's the difference between the two tours as far as just like the, 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 the quality of play? Because like I said, I've heard people kind of, you know, knock and say that they don't like the format with live and the format with, P, with, with PGA. Yeah. You know. I'll you direct that to, this to me. To me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I would say it as uh, basically your idea for what you were talking about earlier with hockey. Okay. Somebody like the Saudis came along with a ton of money and, um, you know, wanted to start something different and they do it a different way. They only play three rounds. They play with music on, um, you know, it, it's they, like nightclub golf. Yeah. They can wear what they oh, want. Okay. They can wear shorts. And, yeah. Um, as far as the golf goes, like nothing really, like the game is the same. You can wear right? shorts. That's another thing too. No dress. Yeah, code. They, they play yeah. the game of golf the same. They play 18 holes. They, you know, right. it's, they'll got to get the ball in the hole. Uh, so that doesn't really change. It's just kind of a lot of, political bullshit around it um and you know a lot more like it's like guaranteed money and stuff like that and um so that kind of side of it is just you know that's so, as far so as the, the golf's the goes, same doesn't really concern us but. the golf's the same but the guys get paid more and it's a more relaxed atmosphere exactly yeah so yeah so i get why the pga is scared because they realize this might take them out at some point oh, because that's sure. that seems a lot more interesting to watch dude those saudis they said something ridiculous, like the people who are backing them, are, or not, I shouldn't say backing them, but their oil money and like yeah. oh, is yeah. worth. They said something it was like fifteen billion or something, yeah. you know. So they they, they got they endlessly, yeah, oh, yeah, endlessly deep pockets, yeah. and um, I like it. I think competition creates like good stuff, and you know, I'm not a fan of uh, the old. Um, how do I say this? Like. The old white haired guys in, or the old the white guys in, in, the good old boys yeah, in, in sports. Mm -hmm. And golf is very like that, man. You got yeah. your country club fucking stuffy guys. Yep. And if you don't do it this way, they exile you, right? Yep. And so you, gotta you got to follow people, the procedure and all that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of got, you know, people who have gone against the grain here and want to create something different. And basically, mm -hmm. those old fuckers didn't like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. so that that's the easiest way to kind of well, imagine we had Saudi it. Arabian money in hockey. Wouldn't that be? Something? Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, basically, it was like what what was the old? Is it WHA? It was like you know mm -hmm. you had something, or I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but like yep. uh, you know WWF and WCW. That's your right. kind of thing going on right now. Right. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But at the end of the day, you know, there's still like. For the masters concerned the guys are still good players and it doesn't mean they can't play just because they're playing on a different tour and wearing shorts you know <laughs> like and as far as you know what you guys do when you're putting your hard-earned money on on someone like god yeah. to you know take all biases out of it right and, you know so yeah i guess that's the easiest way to kind of describe it sorry if i was going on there a little bit oh that's good i mean there is the, there's oh, yeah. significant difference and they and the thing is too when i first watched the live golf i was all confused like i'm wait a minute they got the individual yeah. you know battle like usual and then they got this team event thing going on it's like and sometimes you get mixed up and it's like it's hard to keep track of both but that yeah. unique yeah. portion they have an individual and a team event in okay. every tournament with live mm -hmm. yeah you see, like, you know, that, I, I, it's more interesting to watch. Like I said, just from somebody who's on the outside, I would be more tempted because you know, regular. I appreciate people, that it's different. Yeah, 
yeah. Yeah. regular I, PGA I is where I nap to on a Sunday in the summertime. Like you said, but having music and enthusiasm and the crowd being into it, like what's that tournament? The, is it the Waste Management Open in Phoenix? Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, big yeah. Like Waste Management. Open. Right, right. <laughs> it's like having more of that in golf, and I'm like, I get that that a lot of the traditionalists might not like that, but once again, if you're trying to bring in a newer audience or just a different <laughs> demographic, having that option, okay, fine. Once and like I said, split them up. They don't need to be blended. We don't need to have music playing during <laughs> all the PGA events. You know, the yeah. Scottish Open doesn't need uh, drum and bass, but have something that's available for you know as an, as an alternative. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's basically what it is, man. I think like. I don't know if you've, uh, if either of you have gotten the chance to go at all, but um, a really good buddy of mine has gone to a live event. He said, like, he's like, man, it's night and day difference. Like, if he said for that, live blows BJ out of the water because let your hair down, to... party vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said they had a concert beforehand, Nelly yeah. or someone beforehand. Oh, okay. Then everyone comes, and he's like a big golfer too, like rib, you know, scratch player and stuff. Everyone comes on the range at the same time because they all they shotgun started it, so they all tee off at the same time. That's like one of the things you know with the tournaments. Like sometimes, and I've gone to PGA tournaments where you're there all day, and you know because guys are teeing off at seven a.m. and some guys tee off at three thirty. And so he said everyone's on the range at the same time, so you can see everyone. Uh, you know, music playing, very chilled atmosphere. Everyone tees off at the same time to see everyone, and then they got after another concert or another event, and you know they're really kind of trying to do different shit. And like, I'm not one way or the other. I'm not promoting. And everyone it. starts their round on a different hole. That's why they're able to tee off, you know, at the yeah. same time. Everybody, yeah, okay, yeah. that's cool. So, yeah. yeah, it's. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I'm never opposed to anything. Like I, like I said, I I try to embrace change. People hate change, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so when you've played golf like this for I like the standard years, PGA like, format more, but I'm not against live for doing it the way they're doing. They're trying to be different. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to be yeah. unique. And, and I, I think if there was that. some yeah. like, yeah. you know, if they were somehow able to mix it or whatever and go like back and forth, whether the players want to play on PGA two or one way, you can live on the net. Like it would, it would be cool. It'd be really cool. But yeah, yeah it's sort of right now that, Freaking WWE thing going on, really between the two of them. So. Yeah. Well, and and, and make perfect, sure the yeah. best golfers get to play in the majors. That's all I care about. Yeah, Everyone yeah. Should yeah. They, they should. They yeah. should figure something out with yeah. that. Yeah. Right, and, and you know, and that probably naturally blends itself in due time. You know, like yeah. I said, For as sure. just the game grows and and the get and, and you know time time moves on, there will be elements that the PGA will say, hey, we could adopt this from live and use that, and it's still. St- fits in with our traditional format or, you know, expands enough to where it's not rocking the boat too much. No. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't get change unless somebody, you know, radical like this comes along and right. it's like, fuck yeah, we're, we ain't scared to do it our way. And then, right. you know, it, when, so Alex, when this first came out, like when Liv was first going down, yeah. Uh, all of a sudden the PGA, like, you know, they were, they were seeing the money that they were, John Rom getting. Right. In five six hundred million and stuff like guaranteed. Oh, they, they panicked. Play. They freaked out. They they, they shit their pants. Yeah, and all of a sudden happened. they're getting yeah. now they're like, oh well, we're gonna elevate uh, now this this and this event is gonna be have a twenty million dollar purse instead right. of a ten million right. dollar. And guys yeah. were like, you were hearing on the tour, they were like, well, where the fuck did this extra ten million just come from? You know, so that's that's a lot of the white hair shit that I'm talking about in the background. Mm-hmm. That who knows, man? Maybe those guys are stuffing their pockets and. You know, and short change in the uh, the players, but without that radical change like that, like the PGA Tour guys are certainly benefiting from this. You know, right now, yeah. when that happened, then they were showing the breakdowns of how. Because I knew, you know, how you know, of course, you have your winner gets the most money, but how the payouts go for guys who finish in twentieth or fortieth, and when they showed how Liv was paying them out, and it goes, oh well, it makes a lot of sense. And it's like yeah. golf is, it, you don't have to follow golf to know there's money in golf. Where's all the money going? So, like yeah. you said, yeah, yeah. the fact that, that they're being transparent and everybody's getting paid and, and getting paid uh, uh, handsomely, yeah, that that's a good thing to see as well. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, look at the 11, whatever the YouTube issues were, it's led to 1,100 combined viewers right now. And I think that might be a record for the most people watching the show at yeah. one time. Nice. So, that's pretty good. 1,100. Hey, uh, I told you, 11. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just there you go. 100% <laughs> nice. you did. All right, you. let's get your final Masters 
picks here, Brendan. Who do you like to win? And also, someone's asking Raymond your thoughts on Tiger Woods and his career and what he's got left. So go oh, for man. it. Tiger's the goat. Yeah, I mean, like even a week like this, you can't not like he might be sniffing around, right? At this point, it's kind of like he's so beat up. Can he walk the course and stuff? Yeah, of course. But he could withdraw. He could miss the cut, and he could be in contention on Sunday. Exactly. There's like yeah. <laughs> wide range of variance yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it like I'd absolutely love to see that again. You know, 2019 was like one of the best days ever for me watching that. Uh, all ever, all it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he's the best man this is, at least you know in, in our generation and whatnot and for what he's done for, for the game is like how many people he's brought into it and stuff um but as far as my rest of my master's picks goes i mean obviously you know very easy to say scheffler like the hot guy won whatever two times in a row there and then finished second or whatever it was um i think it's hard to not say him um, I do like Kepka, which you said, obviously always shows up in the majors. Really high on Joaquin Neiman, I think is like somewhat of a sleeper. I don't know what he is in the in the odds wise of what you said. Uh, Thirty to one in that range. Yep. One guy who I actually think who's at least like my sleeper, who's they haven't talked about a lot on on the golf channel, is uh, Bryson DeChambeau. I think I follow no. a lot of DeChambeau stuff. I think he's been playing like pretty good. His is the short maybe, game going to be there? Is the flat stick going to be working? That's yeah, if, if he him. gets yep. that going, because yep. he's uh, like I've been following his stuff on YouTube. He's got some really good content, and he was saying like he's never felt as good with the driver. When it, man, you get a guy who's hitting it three fifty plus every time on a rope, like it's hard to beat. But yeah, if he if he puts it together on the greens, I think he could easily be a a sleeper for sure and shot 58 or whatever last year or whatever it was. So who knows? Those, those are kind of my, I guess my four core guys here. And then you, you said Cam Smith. I like him too, but he's, yeah. he said he's, he came out and said he's been struggling with his driver. So that's not really a place that you No, that's the one concern. You don't, that. you don't yeah. love hearing that. You're right about that. He, he is. Course. It's yeah. almost like he's yeah. such a good putter that sometimes it offsets it. But right. Yeah. It's, then, you, you know, you have like a Mickelson or something like there's the old boys who like they've won. They've Baba, like, you know, these guys, they've won there before and they just know how to get around the place. So yep. but those are my kind of four core guys there. Yeah, I'll throw out a couple more. The Gala, I don't mind at 45 yeah. to one. Say he's the Gala. Nick Taylor, the Canadian. I gotta have one Canadian. Yeah, he's had a good, card. yeah, a good run yeah. too. He's, yeah. he's had a good year, and of course, the Canadian Open that was just amazing uh, last year. What he did there, that epic win, snapping the drought of Canadians at the Canadian Open. I'll be there, by the way, Canadian Open, right in my backyard this oh, year. Oh, nice! I'll be going to at least one or two of the days. Uh, Hamilton Golf and Country Club, Ancaster, uh, Ontario. So I'll be there, uh, and uh, looking forward to that Canadian Open uh, coming up. Uh, yeah, Nick Taylor, uh, 175, and then I'll throw one more. Harris English there at 140. Mm. Uh, a couple yeah, of uh, yeah, a couple yeah. of longer shots there that I'm uh, going to invest a few a few shekels in, a few bucks yeah. in that. Uh, this is a, we could have actually gone three hours, but we're going <laughs> to wind it down, um, and we'll definitely get you back on uh, probably yeah. once your season's done. We'll get you uh, for sure back on. Yeah, anytime, uh, for guys. Sure. Yeah, no doubt. It was a lot of fun. Uh, no question about that. Shout out to everyone in the chat. We'll jump right in. By the way, you know the deal, patreon.com slash ice guys, $10 per month. Sign up there for our daily sides, totals, player props, uh, bonus content, more Patreon exclusive live betcasts, three coming up here in April, and the Ice Guys store, iceguys.myspreadshop.com. Yes, we got uh, another special coming up pretty soon. Uh, we have to check the email for that. Uh, the Spreadshop will send me that all the information. But we got everything in stock. Caps, T-shirts, hoodies. Get yourself a T-shirt and a cap right now because it's getting warm out. Spring is finally sprung. So get everything right now at iceguys.myspreadshop.com. All right, back to wrap. Bargain bin special tonight and best bets to wrap up the show in just a moment right after we hear from our great sponsors, Boston Hemp. And
All right, Boston and Pink, make sure you check them out. And again, get 20% off all orders on the website using the promo code ICEGUYS at bostonhempinc.com. All right, bargain bin special of the night. Alex, what do you like? Yeah, so we're going to that Vegas-Edmonton game. I like Vegas to get the job done as far as victory is concerned, but I do think we see some Edmonton players kind of step up, especially in the absence potentially of number 97, Connor McDavid. One of those guys being veteran Corey Perry. You can get him to score anytime goal, plus 410 over at FanDuel. He's a guy who always finds himself right in the front of the net, plays that same kind of role that Zach Hyman does you know, on that second and third line. We may see him shift around a little bit with no McDavid there. So look for Corey Perry to get one, plus 410 at FanDuel. It's my bargain been special tonight. There we go. I like it. Uh, definitely. Um, uh, Corey Perry there for Scory Perry, hopefully tonight. Uh, for the uh, Edmonton Oilers against the uh, Vegas uh, Golden Knights for uh, Alex B. Smith with his uh, bargain bin special of the night. Uh, for my bargain bin special tonight, I'm going to keep it uh, to Connor Garland, Vancouver Canucks, and we're going to take over one and a half points at plus 375 for uh, Connor Garland tonight of the Vancouver Canucks against his old team. The price is good. Uh, the goal prop, I don't believe, is good enough for the bargain bin uh, as far as the price point. Uh, I'm seeing only, you know, plus 210. So we're going to go with the over one and a half points. Plus 375 for Connor Garland uh, tonight for my bargain bin special of the night. All right, best bets. Alex, what do you like for best bet? Yeah, we'll go with the Blackhawks and Blues. We'll go first period over one and a half minus 115. This definitely feels like it could be one of those games where we see some goals uh, early and often in the contest in the season. Division rivals rolling the puck out there and seeing who gets the job done and uh, looking for a couple goals in the first 20 minutes. Chicago, St. Louis, first period over one and a half minus 115. That's my best bet for Wednesday. All right. Chicago, St. Louis, over one and a half. First period, best bet for Alex B. Smith. Brendan, you can pass if you want, but we'll still throw it to you. If you got a best pick, have at it. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm passing on this one. Nothing but, wrong uh, with that. I I will say I, I think you guys were right with the, the early one over, uh, what was it, five, five and a half. I think maybe that yeah. one's going to be a high-scoring game in the Chicago game. So maybe, maybe that one. There you go. And yeah. that's a great segue, Brendan, because that's my best bet. Chicago, St. Louis, over five and a half. I like it. Two teams out of the playoffs. Uh, I don't see a lot of defense or shot blocking. I think we see goals tonight with the Blackhawks and the Blues. And a total that's five and a half uh, makes, I think, it even better. So five and a half. Uh, Chicago, St. Louis, over five and a half, minus 115 for my best bet. See if we can cash another over five and a half as a best bet, yeah. uh, just <laughs> like last night with the uh, Rangers and the Islanders. Hopefully not as stressful, uh, though, tonight. Uh, with this one uh great stuff brennan i can't say it enough great job yeah. uh your youtube channel yeah, yeah. is it's going to be a hit i love what you're doing with it yes. uh and um we're going to try to direct people to it and get people to tune Appreciate in that. but i definitely think that um it's going to be cool you telling these stories of your experiences as a player and uh your storytelling is great you got the charisma i mean you've got all the pieces in place to for that youtube venture of yours to be a success my friend so we and, wish and, you all the absolute best and in the calder cup playoffs as well with those charlotte yeah. checkers yeah no i appreciate it guys thank you very much uh just for having me and let me use your platform to kind of share some of this stuff so thanks again uh appreciate it Absolutely. hopefully we can do this again Definitely we will uh, down the road. That's 100% we will, no doubt. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Apologies for the YouTube issues, yeah. uh, but we thank you for hanging in there. Great show today. Make sure you download the podcast in audio form whenever you can't watch the show live on all the platforms. For Alex B. Smith and our special guest, Brendan Perlini, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Wednesday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we'll be back tomorrow on Thursday for another edition of The Ice Guys. 